This radio program comes to you thanks to millions of young men, Americans fighting overseas. The Treasury Salute. This is a program of the United States Treasury, your Treasury, reminding you for the fifth time in this war, you save and serve when you buy war bonds. And you salute with us a hero of this war, Major Greg Boyington, U.S. Marine. Winner of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Arnold Moss with David Brookman and the Treasury Orchestra. If you'd been sitting on a cloud over the Solomon Islands on September 16th of last year, you'd have seen a Marine flyer knock five enemy planes out of the air. Lucky fellow, you'd have said, and you probably would not have known but for most of his life, that flyer was known as a bad luck boy. And here is his story. The story of a boy who's now a hero. A rough, tough Marine called Greg Boyington, whose outfit loved him so much, they called him Pappy. A lot of flyers come from Idaho. Little Idaho boys like Greg Boyington dream of flying. But back in 1941 at the Burma base of the Flying Tigers, the men there didn't talk about Boyington as a man with dreams. They knew him as a poison flyer, an aviator who's chased by bad luck and gremlins. Uh, I think he's just sore. He came out here with a Marine Captain's Commission. He figured he'd get a command right off. Oh, quit laying into him. He's all right. Nothing against the guy because he was in the Marines. No. Well, it isn't easy to be a captain in the Marines. So what happened? You don't give up bars just like that. Is he kicked out? Is he running away from something? But my dough, I don't like him. It looks like he wants to pick a fight. You can't be nice to a guy like that. Maybe we haven't tried. Hi, fellas. What's all the grubbing about? I bet you're discussing the great Marine. Sure, Martin. He makes good talking. Guess you didn't see him just now. What happened? He ripped the wing off a P-40 trying to get off the ground. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Hey, pipe down. Here he comes. Boy, is he mad. Hiya, Captain. Your baby carriage get away from you? <laughs> yeah, so what? Nothing, nothing, Greg. It's happened to all of us. Uh, take Kelly here, friend. You take Kelly. <laughs> Gee, don't get sore. Look, I cracked up a plane and I've got to explain it. But I'll do my explaining to General Chenault, not to you guys. Is that clear? Well, just for that, I'm going home. Come on, boy, the Marines have landed. Joe, I don't care what you say to me, but lay off the Marines. Is that clear? Okay. Come on, fellas, beat it. You fight here before you know it, and you'll have some explaining to do to the old man. Go on, Charlie. You too. Hey. Something bothering him. It's none of my business. But as far as I'm concerned, you're a great flyer. You always have been. Bad luck can happen to anyone. <laughs> Bad luck for Boyington all the while he was in Burma. Then the Flying Tigers retired to Loy Wing, much battered and tired. Once after an air fight, the Flying Marine landed so badly that he overshot the field and banged himself up severely. It was bad luck whichever way he went. But somehow he managed to whistle his one tune as if to remind the others that no matter what, he was a good Marine. It was after Pearl Harbor that he came one day to Chenault's executive officer. Boynton reporting, sir. What's his resignation for? I'm resigning. No, you can't. But I have, sir. We're in the war now, and I want to fight with my own outfit. You know what the ruling is? The general says that any resignations will automatically draw a dishonorable discharge. That's bad medicine, Boynton. Yes, sir, but I, I want to fight with the Marines. You've got a reputation of being a bad luck flyer. I know. I break my leg at the wrong times. I crack up a few planes. I run out of ammunition in the middle of a fight. But 
But that isn't a half of it. It's all around me. Everything's coming at me. Even my personal life's in the fight. Everything's fighting me, and I'm fighting everything, and all I want to fight is Japs. Sir, I've... I've figured it all out, and that's what I want to do. Okay, Boynton. You'll get your discharge papers as soon as we've moved on to Kunming. <laughs> Boynton quit. He went to India and tried to join the Army Air Corps. But they didn't consider him a good buy. So he went haywire, tried to forget his bad luck in the way men always try. Then one day he woke up to it all, shipped on a freighter as a deckhand and made his way home. The first thing he did was to try to re-enlist in the Marines. And they took him, recommissioned him a major and shipped him to the South Seas. <laughs> Charlie! Charlie, how are you? Look who's a major. How are you, guy? Last time I saw you was at Gunming. Just an old flag tiger come back to life. Just get in? See that plane there? That's mine. I'm going up for my first crack at the jabs. Charlie, I've been waiting six months to get back into it. Well, nothing can stop you now. Let's go, Charlie. You can see me off. Ouch! Gee, I thought you saw that shell casing. Oh, brother, my ankle. Here, sit down here. Gee, that was a nasty fall. Oh, that my ankle Let me see. Now, hold still. I want to twist the foot a little. Ah, oh. It's broken, Greg. A broken ankle just when I was... Yeah. There goes the squadron. you really like Charlie. You've known him a long time. Yeah, I've heard he's a tough guy. Well, no matter what he is, he's our commanding officer, so we'd better make the best of him. I'll tell you about him. He's a fighter that's had a lot of bad luck. But he's a tough fighter. Get that straight. I've been up with him in Burma. The last seven months, he's been drowned with a broken ankle. That doesn't mean a thing. Why'd they give him a regular outfit? We just a patch together bunch from what's left over. Unless us are green. He'll come through. Here comes the major now. Benjamin. That is. Well, right now we're a bunch of casuals, replacements, and some baby flyers. You probably think I'm discouraged. I'm not, because all of us are going to be so good, the rest of the Marine Corps will wish it was us. We'll begin as friends. I don't want any bootlicking. If you don't like what to do, tell me so. And remember one thing. I'll do anything I ask any of you to do. That's the way my pappy talks. Okay. Here's a pappy for all of us. Where <laughs> with you, pappy? Pappy. Well, when do we start? <laughs> uh, we'll start tomorrow morning. Hey, what do we call our outfit? We've got to have a name. Well, yeah, should since most of us, including pappy, have been sort of black sheep. Black sheep? That's it. Pappy and his black sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Boyington trained his men in the kind of fighting he knew best. He'd been handed a catch-as-catch-can outfit, but that was the kind of training he was used to. In the first month, 58 Jap planes brought down, a total squadron loss of two pilots. And by another month, this gay, determined, hard-fighting squadron was a legend. The stories they told were like the tales of knights and dragons that decorated the round table of another such collection of warriors. Well, I'll bet I wasn't two miles from that Jap airport when I heard a voice coming in on my beam. First, it sounded like yours, Charlie. Major Boyington, state your position, please. Major Boyington, state your position, please. Come on in, Pappy. Well, now, right then and there, I recognize the trick. Nobody calls me Pappy but my own boys. None of you would ever ask me for my position. They were just trying to figure out if it was me in that plane they'd spotted. So I told them. This is Pappy. My position is right on top of you, you little so-and-so. Why don't you come up and fight? But they didn't come up, so I went down. Right at them. (laughs) 
This is Charlie speaking. I just wanted to tell you that Pappy Boynton was like that. You see, he's gone now, Pappy is. With 26 Jap planes personally to his credit. The last one was on January 3rd. By that time, the black sheep had got 94 altogether. I saw him bring down the 26th plane. Famous bit of action I ever saw. Then he went chasing a 27. He went way off after it. I never came back. As I came home myself, I kept remembering the things Pappy had said about, well, about dying. Getting killed's always been the least of my worries. I should have been killed a dozen times, considering all the things I've tried to do in my life. Strange as it seems, I've done almost everything I set out to do. And I intend to do the rest. He's gone off of that 27th plane. And he won't come back till he's got him. He's the kind of a guy that hates people who pick on others. And that's what the Jap's doing in this world. So Pappy's up there, way up in the big blue yonder, chasing him. Right into the next world. Maybe you don't hear it. But anyone who fought with Pappy can. It's in the wind that comes in from the sea. It's the sound of a guy whistling. A Marine major named Gregory Boynton. A wonderful guy we call Pappy. <laughs> That's the kind of courage that's winning this war. The courage of men who never give up, no matter what the odds against them. They live and die as heroes, heroes for America. And we at home can't give up either. No matter how great the sacrifice, we've got to make the fifth war loan drive a smashing success. The gold is $16 billion, and $6 billion must come from individuals alone. Now, that means you. It means you've got to dig and dig down deep. Put every dollar you can scrape together into more war bonds. If you don't do it, then you're failing our boys who are out there offering their lives for you and me. And that's what your country asks you to do, and that's what you must do. Back the attack. Buy double the war bonds you bought before. The United States Treasury thanks Frank Lovejoy and Santos Ortega, who appeared on this specially transcribed program. The Treasury salute was written by Forrest Barnes and directed by Paul Lewis. The music was composed and conducted by David Brookman. This is Tip Corning speaking. Mm-hmm.